Yeah. So everything you say now, it's need to wear the tie. Forever to be kept. It's on, <laughs> it's on record. It's going yeah. on the internet. It's the webs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with these ones down here because they're particularly ugly. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. And well, the the idea is that maybe we're just going to focus on the process rather than the the the, the prettiness because the other ones are all so dang pretty. Um, so as Gina knows, this is how I shoot homes. Um, let's go into develop. The first three that I'll shoot are, this is a normal exposure. Then this is two stops underexposed. And this is two stops overexposed. Every single one of them is ugly. Right. And I'm Fine. okay with that. Mm -hmm. Then I shoot a series. This was the first shot of the day. So... I popped the flash, obviously it wasn't enough, so I just, by eye, bring my flash up until we get to a point where the flash looks pretty good. So all I'm concerned about with the flash is getting good color, and we've got good color there, but ugly, ugly shadows. And then over here with the ambient, the, the HDR, or the bracketed, we've got horrible, horrible color, but we've got natural looking lighting. So the object here is that we're going to combine essentially the black and white or the tonal information of this with the color information of that and make a picture that you'll all, you'll all go, oh wait, how, how seriously, when, when we combine these, you're gonna go, that's magic. How did that work? So, um, starting with this, um, I would bring down the highlights a whole ton. And this is just, your basic editing preferences, how you would make this look. Sometimes it's easier if you put this into black and white mode, oh. um, because that's really where we're going with this. We don't care, if we go back into color, we don't care that we've got a yellow glow over here and a blue glow over there. That's not going to matter. Um, this was shot, this was a one second exposure at f11. Um, so you can see there's blue coming from the windows. I don't really care. Um, but I've just pretty much got that to a, a fairly even exposure. And you can see um, by the, the histogram, it's, it's just pretty much good across the... Yours is good. I don't know about yours. I'm still waiting. Oh, okay. So then we go down to the very last one, which is the color version of it. Um, Usually, especially with real estate, there's always something white, uh, a plug on the wall, something like that. So I'll grab that little thing and just click on something white and get a white balance. I think it looks blue here, but it looks really good up there. So I'm thinking that looks color-wise. Where you looking at the fridge? That's the um, yeah, that's where I, I set it Mine's at. warmer looking. At that could just be your monitor. Yeah. Um, but I can go into like the window. And again, I bring the highlights down a little bit, but see, we've got that dark area off to the right, so I bring the shadows way up. Um, and now I'm looking at just trying to get really good color with nothing blown out. So as hideous as that looks flash-wise, you know, once you've got the color that you like, where are you? Yeah, bring shadows all the way down. Just No, the other way. That would be up. Yeah. Right. Okay, up. Mm -hmm. See how that opens up that kind of cubby to the, the right? Okay. Yeah. And then what else am I worried about on this okay. one? Okay, I think you look good. Are you good, Gina? I think so. Okay, so now highlight those two images using the control key or okay. the alt key, I think, for you, or command key. Oh. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then right-click on either one of them. And then see where it says edit in? Mm -hmm. Pull that out. The very bottom one is open as layers in Photoshop. This is why a tripod's so important too for when I'm shooting these, because it will line them all up so that they, um, they're perfect. If they're not quite, sometimes like when we're out like on the subway trips and stuff, mm -hmm. I'll shoot my HDR handheld and right. um, just use the, there's an auto align in Photoshop that'll bring them all into alignment. Okay. So we'll be seeing one of those later with the Photoshop image, I hope, if I did this right. So on the lower right, 
you should see the two layers. And if we did this right, the ambient exposure is on top, and the flash exposure is underneath. Oh, I left my one in black and white. I need oh, it's fine. It is? Yeah, don't worry about that. Okay. It's, it's Believe it or not, it's. I'm going to show you that it's exactly the same for what we're going okay. to do. Yeah, I've got... I've got it in that order. Okay. So Ambient on top, flash on top. Okay. Bottom. So essentially, if you look at this list over here, do I? this I is your images that. stacked. Yes. Yeah. And you're on top, looking down through them this way. Do I have? That's the flash ones, right? The last three. Yeah. Are the, flash. the last okay, three. Okay. So the flash. flash goes on the bottom, right? Yes. Okay. And okay. that is correct. Right. Sorry. Okay. So you're looking at them stacked like this. So. There's no, nothing modifying these at all, so all we're seeing is the ambient exposure. The eyeball is what turns it on and off. So if I click the eyeball, mm -hmm. I will suddenly see the flash exposure. And hopefully they're all going to line up. They look pretty good to me. That looks right. So the way we manipulate these is we put a mask on the upper layers and then um, slowly move that mask away to bring the bottom layers out or the, or the layer on top in. Black reveals. Yeah, Black that's, reveals. I knew there was a the scene. Okay, so the way I set everything up is I try and put my best image or the, the one that is closest to being where I want to end up on the very bottom. And then I mask everything out on top of that and then start bringing in each of those additional layers, the parts that I want, onto the, the good one that's on the bottom, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let's mask out this ambient layer and then see this little thing, the square with the circle in it? Mm -hmm. That's your mask. If you just click it, you're going to get a white mask, which doesn't do anything. And that's not what we want. So Control z will make that go away. And this is the coolest thing I think about. If you learn nothing else about Photoshop, learn this. Your Alt key will do the opposite of what you're doing anytime you're doing anything. So if we now click that mm, um, masking key but hold down the Alt, we get a black mask. Is that what we want? That is what we want, yeah. Because we want to hide that layer. We want to see the layer behind. Underneath. Okay, but if you accidentally didn't do that, Control Z will take you then, out. But then you could go over here, or you could actually do so. Even if you just did the the one in the white, yeah, then you can still go up there and switch it, right? Yeah, you can also do Control I to invert. Yeah, Control I for invert okay. would do the same thing. But the the object is is Less that we're hiding the ambient layer and we're seeing the flash layer. So now we've got black, which hides everything. If we go over, grab a brush and hit the D key, which will give us black and white as our colors, D for default. Um, and if you're clicking on the mask, now your, your pen will be black and white. So see, if I start to paint in, see how the mask is turning white there? Mm -hmm. Right where I painted in? So I'm seeing what's beneath it come in. And that looks pretty dang horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> Might actually look good for you. How do I change brush size? If it's you want to change your brush size, um, it's these two, the close bracket and the open. That's right. Yeah, the so two You don't brackets. practice something for a minute and you're sure. Yeah. Here's another thing that'll kind of really be mind expanding. Um, what I just did when I just painted that in with white and see how we just see right through it, that isn't, that's normal blending. We can change our blend mode so that we get different effects. And there's all kinds of different things. And as you get more and more into masking, you'll discover uses for all these. So see, the center came in, but it turned a little blue. At least it did on my monitor. So I don't like that. I'm going to control Z that out. Um, but we're in normal mode. If you take that normal um, thing right there and go all the way down to luminosity, the blend mode will only be black and white information. So it'll be the same as what you've got with okay, so a black and white question. image. So if I'm, yeah. I'm over here, mm -hmm. 
But if I do this, look at how dark that's going. Yeah. Is that normal? That's Yeah, okay. that's fine. We're not going to... I'll show you how to fix that. So just do that pull down. Go all the way down to luminosity. Now, when we combine these two, all we're going to get is the black and white information of the ambient layer. So we'll keep that color information from the bottom layer, and we'll slowly bring in the, the ambient of the top layer. Um, the next trick is to bring your flow down. Flow is across the top. Um, and hardness of what for you? Have? Zero. Okay. Yeah, perfect. And 1200 is oh, fine. You can go so bigger or smaller depending on. Oh, on I see what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So I just need to work out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be exact. This is, you know, like I will probably make it bigger for when I bring in. Over here, I'll set that. see, I'll make it bigger and just start bringing that in, and I'll bring it smaller for up on top. The object is is you you want to do things gradually and kind of you want things to be subtle, and that's why the flow is lower. So the first thing I notice is dead top center. You see that flash where it hit the ceiling and bounced. So just start painting over that with your brush, and you'll see that come down and start to look natural. And see how we're starting to get the light coming in from the windows? Yeah, and that makes it look natural. And then the next place I look is over to the right in that nook. See how you can see the shadow from the flash of that light? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just start painting around in here. Just kind of go around and around. Just keep painting and all of a sudden you'll see that, that shadow disappear. And things become more natural. Um, now I'm going up and down on this white thing, whatever that, that, and it should start to look a lot more natural. You'll see natural lighting coming in. Look how dark mine is. Um, it's like way dark. Okay, I'm going to show you how to fix that. Um, click on the image on the top layer. Perfect. So that's now got its brackets around it. Mm -hmm. That's how you know that you've clicked on it, so that's active. Then go down, and there's a circle with half white, half black in it. You click that, and see curves about a, two, a third of the way down. Okay. Um, okay, so now what we're doing is we're putting a curves adjustment onto that layer. And this will allow us to lighten it up some. So let's go down and turn off the back layer. So take that eyeball off the back layer. And then, so that leaves you with the mask okay. of the top layer. We want to see that full top layer. So hold down the shift key and temporarily turn off the mask. I wonder if that's because I'm working with a black and white photo. That's okay. So I mean, why work. it looks so dark. Is that... It might, it's just sort of dark. Okay. Go ahead, click on the mask on the, the yeah. Well, holding, oh, no, not that mask. This one? That one. Okay. So, um, click on the mask and hold the shift key. There. So now you're seeing that, that image. Okay. Um, if you hold, is it the, no, the alt button, while well, on the, the adjustment layer, which is the, the curves layer, um, you're, and you hold the alt button, you'll get that kind of down arrow thing. Oh, and then okay. just click that, and that'll make it only affect the layer beneath it, rather than all the layers. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Interesting. And then click on the round circle, and that'll bring up the curves adjustment, and then just go like this, kind of grab it right about two, uh, a third of the way down, and just bring that up, like that. Yeah, there you go. Now go back and hit shift and bring that mask in again. On this one? Yeah. And then turn on your bottom layer and you should be good to go. Does that look better? Yeah, I'll never remember that. <laughs> well, That's why it's being recorded. I know. <laughs> yeah. So the, cool. the object there is, we, and, and this is an important lesson, this is the cool thing about layers, is the, the whole object is to spot problems with your picture and make a new layer to fix that problem. Yeah. You know, when you shoot a sunset, you've got a great sunset, but it's really dark in the foreground. 
So what we do is we make another layer that has a lighter foreground, and then we bring that in. You know, the, the whole object here is, is to turn that picture as perfect as possible. That little step right there that you helped me brighten that, though, that's an important step. Yeah. Every other time I've ever tried to do something like that, I'm, it's affecting your weekend. Mm-hmm. Well, this just does it that one layer. Or that one photo. Okay, getting back to this now, I think we've got the, the right side good and the ceiling good, but this foreground is still looks really flashy, doesn't it? So let's just bring some in there. And just, again, a light touch. The only thing I'm not going to touch at all is that window. Because if we do that, it'll start to blow out. Because the ambient was blown out in the window. So, you know, I just kind of take that shadow out there and all this. And now the shadows are all, I think, looking like they're coming from the windows. And it looks, I think, a lot more natural. Is yours looking natural? <laughs> no? I think so. Okay. Well, do this. Turn the eyeball off on the upper layer and look at where you started, how flashy that is, and then bring that in. Yeah, it does. Definitely. You can tell a huge difference there. Yeah. And so, yeah, like I said, the, the important thing is, you know, what you're looking at is is how to... It's, it's not necessarily how to make a flash look better. It's the idea that you can fix things and do things a lot of different ways. Um, another thing, I, oh, I didn't bring this. Let me see if I've got one in Lightroom. Um, let's see, what do I have in here? Ooh, look at that. Nope, I don't have anything in there. Um, one of the other combined modes is called Lighten, where we pulled that uh, thing down and it went to mm -hmm. luminosity. If we go to Lighten, you can take um, a room like this, and let's say that that kitchen was completely dark. Um, I could have gone in there and taken a second flash picture with the, um, with the flash on and just lit mm. from inside that kitchen and put those two flash layers above and below each other, gone into lighten mode, and I could have painted really, really wildly, and yet only the lighter part mm. um, would come through, so it wouldn't affect other things. The idea there was just to kind of show you how things mix together. And the, the best thing about any of this is if you go too far, you either control Z out of it, or you hit X, and all of a sudden now you're painting with black and you can reverse any of the, the colors or the, 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 um, the effects that you brought in. Um, like I'm going to make my thing really small and I can still see the shadow from the flash here. So I'm going to bring that in really dark. And now that, that, that shadow is gone. To me, in architecture, seeing the shadow flash is like beginner. I don't ever want to see that. So. Shouldn't that light be on? Um, no. no. <laughs> it, that's okay, what everybody my, says in real estate. Turn on all the lights and, and open all the shades and do all that. Open all the shades, yes. Tr turn off all the lights. Otherwise, what you've got is blues and yellows, and they're really, really ugly. If you can keep it to a single color temperature, yeah, I think that's no, better. Okay. Or what you can do is let it go blue, do a layer where blue is turned white, do another layer where the yellow is turned white, and then mask them to put them together and make one flash image out of those. So again, mm -hmm. this is the technique that's going to fix that. Um, but I think with a, an ambient layer beneath it combined in, I think you're getting more natural looking colors and more natural looking images than when you combine color temperatures and um, you may have more light, but the thing is you can always make another layer and bring the exposure up and, and make that darker area look good and then combine it with layers so yeah. that it looks even. Um, the other thing that I've found is you can make mistakes a little bit in those flash areas when you're combining them. 
but if you've got one overall ambient that you're putting over the top of it, it kind of hides all your errors and, and makes the, the image look more cohesive and as a single layer rather than as a bunch of things all cut together. Um, that's another reason I use a really soft brush and a really low flow so that it gradually comes into that new layer. Are you totally lost? Or huh? I'm, no, no, I'm kind of listening more than doing. I'm texting my sister at the moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so is, I'm, is, I'm your, out. is your dad doing okay? Yeah, he's okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just getting my to-do list. <laughs> okay. Do we feel good with that one? Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's go back to the light rooms. And the question would be is if you did it all over again from the beginning, if you could do it and remember how to do it. Well, that's the thing you're going to have to practice. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, why recording is great. Yeah, because then I can just sit there and just keep trying it. Because then you can go out and deliberately take exposure photos of the sunset and then come home and try it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to have fun with this one. Let's go to the subway. Okay, so I'm trying to close that one. Yeah, well, just, okay, yeah, just close, off close it and you don't need to keep it and don't save it unless you want to.